All right, guys, we're going to go over the rough cut prep for the all ceramic preparation. Um, first, you're going to start with a depth cut burr 1.5 or 1, depending on whether you're going to bond the restoration or whether it's a high strength ceramic. And if uh, you are bonding and it is high strength, go with a 1 millimeter depth cut, specifically if you're using Emacs. If you're using a weaker ceramic, all ceramic, or you're cementing Emacs, you go with a 1.5 millimeter depth cut burr. These bottom out, they're idiot proof. Essentially, you're just going to go in the central groove and then bury that all the way down to the hub. And then you're going to go up the buckle and lingle grooves and then the transverse ridges of all the cusps so that you make sure that you get those properly reduced. And it should look kind of messy when you're, when you're done with this. It's not supposed to be pretty. Then you need to smooth them. And you could use this giant ground diamond um, for speed. The bigger the burr, the smoother it cuts, the bigger the burr, the faster it cuts. So um, I'm using this big kind of micro microphone diamond here. And um, you could also use a football diamond if you're uncomfortable with um, this Mac burr. And you're using smooth fluid movements and you're trying to essentially make, make it so you can't see those depth cuts anymore. And in the end, you should have a kind of like a basic plus sign type anatomy for um, mandibular Molars, <clears throat> very simple with all ceramics. You're not really concerned about keeping every little detail of the anatomy. Um, it's semi-anatomical reduction, and it's not fully anatomical like with a PFM. So now you're going to switch to the shoulder diamond. It's a rounded shoulder, 878K016 diamond. The tip is roughly around 0 0.8 millimeters. And for your axial reduction, just focus on your finish line holding the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Let the shoulder be created automatically um, by the diamond. Don't be concerned about how much axial reduction you're getting because it's dictated by your shoulder width and your taper. <clears throat> so just put a little rough cut there. And now to go interproximally, um, I like to do almost a box form, like an operative. And you're going to go crown down, marginal ridge down like this, rather than coming from the side. And you know you're going to have to fit that burr in there anyway, so just go for it rather than using a little miniature burr and spending three hours on that. Just go for it. Um, it takes practice. You want to be visualizing the whole time the adjacent tooth, making sure that you're not hitting it. Any destruction of the adjacent tooth will be definitely considered a failure. And so, like I said, you're just going down very carefully. And that's kind of how you drop boxes in operative as well, so this will help you with that skill using your mirror direct visualization depending on whether you're maxillary or mandibular. And so now that you got that broken, um, you could then take that facial shoulder, which is roughly around 0.8 millimeters because you're using the tip of that diamond and no more. Um, and then you're going to blend it in with that interproximal separation that you just did from the crown down method. There you go. So it's really simple. It shouldn't um, be too stressful. You should probably get to the point where it's automatic and you don't have to really worry about it anymore. Okay, so <clears throat> once you have your kind of facial and interproximals, you're gonna go back and smooth a little bit. Just trying to get a uniform thickness to that finish line, making sure that you're roughly around that point eight. You're going to come lingual, and then you're going to blend that interproximal reduction with your lingual finish line. Now, lingually, I like to keep my finish line two, three millimeters super gingivally just to um, preserve that enamel. And I'm just focusing on my finish line, holding my burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth. That's really the only thing I'm worried about at this point. I'm not necessarily worried about how much axial reduction I, reduction I get because, like I said, it's a function of your finish line and taper. And so if the burr has a built-in six degrees of taper, essentially you don't have to worry about it. And like I said, a little bit more super gingival than on the facial in order to preserve that thick band of enamel there for bonding if you so choose to bond the ceramic restoration in place. And then always a weak spot for students is the corners, the line angles of the tooth, buckle and lingual corners of the tooth. So make sure you go back and smooth those a little bit. But this is just a rough cut. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is uh, going fast, 
getting the outline and then polishing after. Here I've transitioned to a football diamond and I'm putting the you know functional cusp bevel. This is a maxillary here even though it looks like I'm, it's amended here because it's upside down. It's uh, a lot of this was filmed in a mirror. And so I like to use the fo football diamond to kind of smooth out that basic anatomy. You really don't want any chicken scratch, any weird extraneous anatomies. Just kind of think smooth and round for all ceramic. There you go. And that functional cusp bevel is at a 45 degree angle and is about two millimeters wide. And then you need to round the non-functional cusp and on uh, the mesial and distal marginal ridges as well. Okay, let's see. And then, so once you have this, what I like to call a rough cut prep, should be about five minutes for that. You're going to spend another five minutes or so slowing the speed down, really focusing on symmetry and smoothing your preparation. Um, particularly the finish line, the rounded shoulder should have no spikes, lips, bevels. The occlusion should be um, semi-anatomical, kind of rounded and smooth with a little bit of depth in the fissures and grooves compared to the transverse ridges. And you should have rounded all your corners and you should be on a slower speed. I like to use about a seven or 10 speed for the electric hand pieces, the NSKs that we have. <clears throat> and then you can certainly transition to fine diamonds at this point and really just take your time. This is what will delineate, you know, a uh, preparation that's mediocre, say like in the 70, 60 range for a grade to a preparation that might be in the 80, 90 range is you know taking it from a rough cut prep to something that's polished and that looks like you had burr control when you did it and this is the step that you do not want to cut corners on i oftentimes will spend just roughly about 10 5 to 10 minutes on this so usually have five minutes for the rough cut prep clinically and then maybe another five or ten minutes polishing everything and critiquing self-assessment of the preparation um, just making sure that you have perfect symmetry on your finish line. Facially, um, I like to keep the finish line about a millimeter super gingival. And later on in the semester, we're going to talk about more conservative preparation types that um, don't even require a lot of axial reduction at all. And you keep the margin about seven millimeter super gingival. But we're not going to go over that right now. This is just a basic, and that's the non functional cusp bevel there, just a slight rounding um, that I just did. And, yeah, so have fun. You should get to the point in this semester where you're taking no more than 15, 20 minutes to do a prep like this. And uh, I'm always available one-on-one -on -one to tutor those who are struggling. So please let me know. Don't be uh, shy.